is cracking a bottle. <laughs> Cookies, Coca-Cola. No, just throw it over here. Get it on me. I want it all over me. Who can eat just one Oreo? And don't give me no milk. Oh my gosh. French fries, Coke, Cheez-Its. I've dealt with this in my own life and I've break, broke this back of poverty over this church and I'm coming for you because you have to live a blessed life. For you to help your family, for you to be able to get them out of drug addiction, for you to be able to help that community, for you to be able to reach back and get people that were just like you, you got to get these principles. And I'm not going to let no intimidation spirit come upon me. I, I promise I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to fight for your family. I'm ready to fight for your freedom. I'm ready to fight for your financial mindset. I'm ready to fight. Because you deserve to live a blessed life. This is the Prosperity Gospel 101, but there's more. I'm the candy man, and I just want to give a special shout out to my homeboy, Mike Todd, who invited me to church. And they told me you can belong before you behave, and that's good for me, because you know I have some behaving to do. I just want to invite you <laughs> to Transformation Church so we can get cleaned together. <laughs> Sounding and acting like a woman? This man looks more like a clown than a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But there's more, and it's even more disturbing than what you've seen so far. So here, here's an example here of a, a sermon that he is preaching with his wife's picture in a bathing suit on his shirt. Now, I understand that he was using this as an illustration to some degree in his sermon, but when you go back and listen to the sermon, which I'm not going to post here, but the fact that I have to blur out something on your shirt as a pastor that could be offensive to you who are watching this video, that's a problem. Here's another one. A couple of years ago, he posts a, a video of himself twerking on Instagram or TikTok or one of those platforms. When you twerk, when you twerk, you gotta look like you mad. When you twerk, you gotta look like you mad. Unquestionably, God is mad to see you behave ungodly while claiming to represent him. You get this when you replace sound biblical teaching with church drama and entertainment. In case you don't know what twerking is, the Oxford English Dictionary defines twerking as dancing in a sexually provocative manner, using thrusting movements of the bottom and hips while in a low squatting stance. And that is what you see here. Ladies and gentlemen, would you rather have this man as a pastor who is not ashamed to post sexually immoral content for the whole world to see? Bishop T.D. Jakes, as Michael Todd, made the list of the top ten preachers who were caught doing foolish things in the church. Mr. Jakes alluded that his wife could twerk for the Lord. You're the finest grandmama I ever saw in my life. Five kids, nine grandkids, and still rocking it. She can still twerk for the Lord. Check out the link in the description or end screen to watch other unimaginable things preachers have done in the church. In the same video, we addressed Mike Todd's disrespectful and gross act of smearing his brother's face with saliva during one of his entertainment sermons. These men bring so much shame and reproach to, first and foremost, Jesus Christ and Christianity. Michael Todd is everything but a pastor. When you read 1 Timothy 3, which lists several qualifications for anyone wanting to be a church pastor or overseer, Mike Todd clearly does not meet several of these qualifications. A pastor must be above reproach, and Mike Todd is not. He's greedy for wealth and love of money, and he lacks self-control, as seen by the sexually suggestive photographs he uploads on social media. And the list goes on. This is another perfect example of why people should avoid this man. DJ, can you go ahead and set the pace for us? And y'all follow me. Everybody. Whoa, whoa. Hey, hey. We're going to double time it. Let's go.
you need to understand how dangerous this is. When a pastor with thousands of followers enjoys worldly music, particularly that of well-known Satanists, he sends the wrong message to Christians that it is acceptable to listen to and dance to these immoral, sometimes violent, and sensual worldly songs. Please pray for this man. He's lost and Satan has deceived him. If you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing. Enable the bell icon to get notified when we upload new weekly videos. If you're enjoying this video so far, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and share. Your support helps to get our video in front of those who need to hear the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Thanks for your help. It is evident that most churches in America today are nothing but shows and entertainment, and more often than not, these preachers are just motivational speakers and not pastors. And the congregation loves to be entertained rather than challenged to live a holy, pure, and righteous life. Oh, when we look at our, our Word of Faith friends, or when we look at people who are out there on the fringes of this or that, and we see their faces contorted, and we see the tears, and we see the sweat dripping down, and their bodies heaving all over the place. The tendency, e even though we've come to believe what the Bible says about worship, is to look at that and say, wow, those people really can worship mired in falsehood, often devoid of truth, mimicking pagan rituals. And when we see it, our response is, wow, those people really can worship. How can a pastor spend unnecessary money to demonstrate the gospel when he could open the Bible and allow the Holy Spirit to impress the truth in people's hearts? These people care more about fame and attention than pointing people to Jesus Christ. Even if you only drive it a couple of feet, there's nothing <laughs> like a Rolls Royce. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? It might be beautiful, but you won't find God in an environment where men exalt themselves. What's sad about this is people applauded this preacher as he walked out of a Rolls Royce. We are not entirely shocked, because Apostle warned about this in 2 Timothy 4 verses 3 to 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. Apostle Paul tells believers in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1 to imitate him as he imitates Christ. A pastor's public and private lifestyle should be worthy of emulation, but we can't say the same for Michael Todd. Judge for yourself if this display is gospel and whether Apostle Paul would advise you to listen to and imitate Michael Todd. I said, D, we're going to sign for this loan in August, and it will be paid off by our church anniversary. And he chuckled. I don't think D knew he, who he was messing with. There was a bunch of people who had crazy faith. And y'all sent in gifts from all over the world. And he texted me three days ago. And he said, we've been in business for 57 years. Making loans to over 200 churches. Congratulations. Transformation Church is now the fastest paid off loan in First Bank of Owasso history. It's history in. Some of y'all are getting it. God's saying, look at the past. Be faithful in the present because I'm taking you to the future. Let's make something clear. There is nothing wrong with having lively worship as long as the focus and attention are on God. But you see a man who, instead of imitating our Lord Jesus Christ, has reduced the church to a club where you dance and have a good time, but go home empty and powerless. 
history in the making. We in history in the making. Help me, everybody. Oh, oh. You stand in it. Hey, history in. Again, we are not against paying off church loans fast. Like Michael Todd, most churches in America incur an unbelievable amount of debt to build mighty edifices, but spend little preaching the true gospel that sets sinners free. When people say, no, our, our problem is this, our problem is that, we say, no, 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 our problem is that God created the world and God created man and he put man in the garden to keep the garden and he gave the man a command. And he held that man to perfect, perpetual obedience to that command. And he promised him life if he kept it and death if he didn't. And he didn't keep it. He ate. And because he ate, because of that one man, sin entered the world and death through sin. And everyone born from that man through ordinary generation inherited that man's sin nature. And because of that sin nature, sins proceed from it. And our world is broken because of that sin. And we stand guilty before a holy and righteous God. And we know that he's holy and we know that he's righteous. And so that God in his goodness and in his mercy sent forth his son who was not born of ordinary generation but was born of a virgin. Yes, the virgin birth matters. And because he's fully God and fully man, he obeys the law of God on our behalf in his active obedience. God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. All we like sheep had gone astray. Each of us had turned to his own way, but God laid upon him the iniquity of us all. And Christ died for sin once for all, the just for the unjust. And God imputes our sinfulness to him. And he nails our sinfulness to the tree so that all those who come to Christ may enter in, so that all those who place faith in Christ might be saved, but not only saved, but sanctified. And we're further sanctified throughout this life by the very same gospel that saves us until one day when it's all said and done, we're not just saved from the penalty of sin, we're not just saved from the power of sin, but one day we're glorified and saved from the very presence of sin. That's the gospel that we preach. That's the gospel that we need. And that's the gospel that's more than enough. When you scroll through Mike's social media account, you would quickly realize that his affections appear to be more on things and pleasures of this life than things above, which goes contrary to what the Bible teaches in Colossians 3, verses 1 and 2. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. That's right. What about you? I mean, you could be here, but not love me. Okay, come on, get it together. When we have to blur the image of a pastor and his wife due to its sensual nature, that is a significant red flag. Mike Todd talks a lot about faith, but it ultimately boils down to having faith that God would meet your earthly needs. There is nothing wrong with believing God to heal you or meet your needs, but using the name of Jesus Christ to promote prosperity gospel is pure deception. The New Age prosperity gospel preachers, popularly known as Name It and Claim It, embody what we call faith talkers, which, by the way, is no faith at all. My family will be healed, that's my faith talk. Faith talk. My bills will be paid, that's my faith talk. Faith talk. I'm gonna forgive, that's my faith talk. Faith talk. Anxiety's evicted, that's my faith talk. Faith talk. Depression got a bow, that's my faith talk. My marriage will be whole, that's my faith talk. I'm a live pure, that's my faith talk. I'm single secure, that's my faith talk. My business will be blessed, that's my faith talk. My church will impact the world, faith talk. My kids will love Jesus, that's my faith talk. And I will give money away, faith talk. 
Your boy is gonna be paid. That's my faith talk. I will heal the sick. That's my faith talk. That's my faith talk. False preachers like Mike Todd, through his dramatic preaching style, hypnotize people into believing that they have enough faith to receive their breakthroughs. Faith not grounded exclusively on Jesus Christ and His Word will always lead to disappointment, which is why many people become disappointed with God and Christianity after years of listening to prosperity gospel preachers and handing over thousands of dollars to these charlatans. You can create your life the way you want your life to be. You can create your world the way you want your world to be. In the book, there is something called the Law of Attraction. Your thoughts and your words attract this reality. The sequence goes like this. Know what you want. Two, believe you will get it. Three, visualize the fulfillment of it. And four, speak it out loud and you will bring it into existence. What is the source of this? Where does this come from? Answer. Satan? This is satanic. This is satanic. This is not just off-centered. This is satanic. Why do I say that? Because health, wealth, prosperity, the fulfillment of all your dreams and your desires, that's what Satan always offers. That's called temptation based on the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's exactly what corrupt, fallen, unregenerate people want. That's why it works so well, right? If you observe, most famous prosperity preachers, such as Joel Osteen, T.D. Jakes, and Michael Todd, have all wavered on the Bible's teachings about homosexuality. In this video, Mike Todd twisted the scripture order to fit his narrative that those who practice homosexuality are our brothers and sisters. Please note that the key word is practice. Just think of the prodigal son. He took his father's inheritance, went and squandered it on, mis most theologians believe, on hookers, on, on gambling, on, on frivolous living. But the father never disowned him as his son. Church, until we believe this, we look at people on the street who smoke as less than us instead of as my brother and sister. You look at the person who's walking into the gay nightclub as an enemy instead of your brother and sister. Mike Todd claims to believe in the prosperity gospel on his website, yet he attempts to deny it in this sermon. Let's write it down like this. More money, more problems is the confession of, watch this, the poverty gospel. See, everybody always talks about the prosperity gospel and how it's bad and, 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 and it's gotten a bad rap. And I'm going to talk about that because it is. People are suffering, not from the prosperity gospel. They're suffering, dying, and raising kids in the poverty gospel. He then goes on to talk about what the right or balanced gospel is. What is God saying? I don't want you at either extreme. I don't want you to believe the prosperity gospel or the poverty gospel. I want you to believe in the purpose gospel. False teachers keep coming up with all kinds of false gospels, but the Bible is clear about what the gospel is. The good news that Jesus Christ came, suffered, and died for sinners so that those who place their faith in him will be saved. Mike Todd, what exactly is the purpose gospel? More money, more purpose. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When I have more money, because my money is directed by God, more money means more what? Purpose. I can reach people. I can help people. I can rescue people. I can send family members into rehab. More money, more purpose. I can go buy somebody else some shoes that doesn't have them. I can be able to be one to go into North Tulsa and ask the educators, what do you need? Instead of asking for a government official to do what they'll never do because it doesn't make dollars and cents. The body of Christ is supposed to raise up and be the answer to the problem. More money, say more purpose. Say it what you mean. More money. More money. You can and should help the poor and needy, but it is not the gospel of Jesus Christ, friends. This man is confused, and he is misleading people. 
Some people will view this video and think we're condemning or judging Mike Todd. Nothing could be further from the truth. Nothing will bring us joy to see Mike use his gifts to preach the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray he repents and stops deceiving people.